Here we are here today at Oxford High School with Oxford High School varsity vo volleyball coach, Coach McKenzie. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fine. I got to tell you uh, a little short story because a lot of people don't understand how many hats you wear around here. Your oh. softball, your volleyball, and what else you got going on? Um, actually, this year we've added bowling, so I'm going to be the boys and girls bowling coach and also drive a bus. So, I love it. I know you, and you're my neighbor, too. Yes, sir, <laughs> I am. Right up the street from you. <laughs> Listen, let's talk about some of these kids you got okay. here now. We're actually going to be doing this um, year-round. Okay. So I can't, I, I'm excited about volleyball. I'm excited about softball. And, and, you okay. know, I love sports. And yes, sir. So we want, I want to talk about this. And you got some, some uh, great players. You got, how many seniors do you have? We have three like, seniors this year. Three seniors. Um, Abby Mitchell, um, she's an outside hitter. Sadie Grace Morrison, she's a middle hitter. And Chaucie Whitfield, she's a middle hitter and also a right side hitter. Oh, man, you got, is, is that the same Whitfield or the Whitfield that's on the football field? That's, yes, sir. That's and then um, her sister plays basketball. Oh, yes. So, so they you, got a very yeah, athletic, talented, fa talented family. Yes, sir. Well, that's great, great. Anything that, that, that you would like for us to talk about for us, your uh, preparation for before games and stuff because I know you guys got a lot of games and um, some of these kids don't have a clue about volleyball and I want them to know about it. We started practicing um, in June. We go two days a week in June and then we pick it up some in July. We had about a three week period where we practiced in August before we played our first match on the, I think it was the 18th of August. So, I mean, it's, if we're not if we're not practicing, we're lifting weights, we're getting better, we're getting quicker, we're getting faster. I mean, and then once season starts, it kind of just, depends on our schedule changes week to week what our what our schedule is but um, they work hard and you know you're trying to balance the time between your volleyball skills their academics their footwork stuff lifting weights okay. and just a lot of times too they just gotta have some rest time to recover because okay. I mean these like we've we've been in season three weeks and we've played um, 16 matches so and then we've got a good weekend this weekend we should have between four and six matches on Saturday and that's a lot that's a lot in a one day time period so I, I actually got a chance to spend some time when my daughter was coming through and she mm -hmm. got a chance to play volleyball before she got up to she didn't get a chance to get to varsity but I got a chance to go to some of the games and I noticed that not just one game they like three and four games and yes it's a lot and I and I see that and I say these ladies are actually these young ladies have to be in shape yes sir and these guys, I don't, I don't think them guys know how much shape, the best well, shape they'll be in. we started, um, this is my 20th year at Oxford, and mm -hmm. when I came, we started summer workouts, and uh -huh. um, it's more so now than when I started, because we had a lot of kids that just played one sport, but now we got a lot of kids that play multiple sports, so everybody's doing competition in the summer, practicing, so you got to have good communication with your other coaches, and you got to put the kid first, and like we've, like last night, um, I had four volleyball kids, volleyball starters for me that had a flag football game, so they missed practice, mm -hmm. but they went and played football, and that's what we want. We don't want all kids to play all sports, so, I mean, they've got to be in shape. Oh, man. In order for, and, and this has been one of the things that I, I love about our school system here at Oxford was, in order for you to win those championships, state championships, you were looking for the, some of the best athletes and some of the best teammates, and sometimes you have to have sports kids that actually play more than one sport absolutely and to make that thing happen and make it work for you and I, I appreciate hearing that from you because I've been around some kids and coaches that don't like it well I think with you know like I said before we have I have a, a lot of kids 7 through 12 they're playing flag football but I've also got I've had some kids that in the past that have ran cross country and mm -hmm. played volleyball in the same season right. and um, you've got to be able to work with with, with both coaches and both sports and not one, one sport's more important but a lot of that just communication with the head coaches and we've got great head coaches here and great communication and therefore I think it makes our whole total female athletic program the best it can be. Yeah. You guys um, have two or three games that we're getting ready to televise for you guys. Yes sir. I, I'm very excited about that. That's next week. That's right. And I don't know how how the young ladies are. They probably don't know yet. But they don't know yet. We're, we're gonna keep it like that. That's right. <laughs> keep it like that. But I, I'm excited about it because the school has actually stepped up, and I think it's it's about time that we actually put the spotlight on more than just one sport around here. And I I love that as being a you know I used to be here myself. I used to be an athlete at this school, and I always know that Oxford loves their sports. But when I see that they got more 
to give now. Oh, yes. And I see you got bowling, you got fishing. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had fishing when I was in school, I'd probably be still in school right now. Uh, <laughs> I love fishing. You know, our motto here is we want we want every kid to be able to, or every student to be able to have a chance to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got their knack, their knack in life. And it may not be sports, it may be bowling, it may be fishing, it may be robotics and green power. I mean, we offer so much for so many kids at so many different levels. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got one of the best school systems in the state, so. It is, it is. I gotta ask you about some of the teams that you guys are facing right now in volleyball. And I was looking at your schedule and I know you guys are playing teams like Alexandra and Jacksonville. I seen Donahoe on the schedule too, but I don't know if you guys watch it playing them. But I see some tournaments coming. Up. Um, we've got Donahoe second week in October there. Um, we played Fort Payne last week at uh, Alexandria, and that's an area opponent. Mm -hmm. And we lost the first set 23-25, won the second set 25-23, won the third set 15-13. So it's neck and neck. So we got a tough area with Fort Payne, and we've got them at home. Actually, it's next Thursday at 5.30. So the teams that you have uh, in your area, and most teams are out of Birmingham? Um, in our area this year for volleyball, it's Gadsden City and Fort Payne. Okay. That's kind of changed. It's a little different for softball. It's a little different for bowling. But for volleyball, it's Fort Payne and Gadsden City. So. Fort Payne. And you haven't fa faced neither one of them yet? No, sir. We got um, Fort Payne on the 15th and Gadsden City on the 20th. Home? Yes, sir. Oh, man. I know I'm around here on the 15th, but I just know for a fact that I want people to start coming out to these volleyball games because it's, it's getting to the point where a lot, of, a lot of excitement going on, and I love it. Well, we started this thing this year. Um, it's, we're having theme night at our at our home matches, and my assistant, Coach Poe, came up with this idea where we're trying to recognize, like, different clubs, organizations, faculty. Like, the first week we had a home game on the 29th, we had – uh, athlete night. So if you wore your jersey or the shirt that said what sport you played, you got in free. And then next week we have club and we have faculty. So we're trying to include everybody to come out and watch volleyball because I don't think some people know how exciting it is because they've never been to a game. That's, that's why. And that's why I'm trying to put it out there. Yes, sir. And TV24 is actually trying to make sure that we spot, put the spotlight on all the kids. And that's what it's all about. So some people that say, hey, you're not getting scholarships out of here. These kids are getting scholarships. I mean, a lot of them are getting academic scholarships. Absolutely. And I love that more than anything else. But having a, a coach that's got 20 years into the system, and, <laughs> well, you don't get 20 years into a system like this right here without loving kids and knowing oh, yeah, what you're sure. doing. And I've been around you long enough to know that you 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 one of the top. And I Thank and you. I brag about you off the field and on the field. And I just I want to just say that because I'm standing here with you. But I've, yes, sir. I've been around long enough to tell them that you know what you're doing. And uh, if the proof is in the pudding and you got to keep doing what you're doing. And we want to make sure that every time we sit up with this camera and do these interviews with you that we have some good things to talk about. To talk about. Sounds good. And um, today is like a little rough edge, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad to know that we're going to break the ice and we're going to have more to talk about because I know you got bowling and softball. Yes, sir. I can't keep my mouth shut when it comes down to a baseball, so I know I ain't gonna be able to keep my mouth shut about a softball, okay? But coach, you know, I like like to say thank you for doing this yes, right sir. here with us and uh two in two weeks I'll see That's you. Again. Sounds good. Talk to you then. Thank you. Okay, here yeah, we here today with the uh, cross country coach here, uh, Mr. Landon. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good to see you, brother. Good to see hey, you. Uh, you've been around here now. I Coach, uh, head coach, what, about four or five years? This is my sixth year. Six years? Yes, sir. Now, I can tell you right now, six years of uh, hanging around here in cross country, that, that speaks highly. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And I, I just want to talk to you today about some of the kids, and uh, you, you you can spotlight some of the kids that you know that's, uh, you know, your seniors, or you got some guys that actually are stepping up. Do you have some names you want to give me tonight? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've got several seniors. Uh, one of my girls, Katie Kerr, uh, she's a senior. Um, she has r now run two races. Actually, has set uh, our school record in both races. She's reset it. She just set the course record at our previous race in Mumford. Um, so she's she finished second in our first in our home race and then finished first um, at Mumford this past weekend. And and she's running really well. She's running 1930s. Um, she's got some schools looking at her, some colleges looking at her to go uh, under scholarship. So we're really excited about, really excited about her. Um, you know, staying on the girls' side, Emerson Maniscalco. She's a sophomore. 
This is only her uh, third year running cross country. Um, and she's really stepping up to the plate and really uh, putting in a lot of work. Both these girls are putting in anywhere between 40 and 50 miles a week mm. um, getting ready for this season. And she just actually ran her, her best over time, uh, call it personal record. Um, last week at Mumford, she ran a 2040. So she ran really well also. You know, I'm, I'm kind of old vet around here, and um, a lot of people wouldn't know it. And some of these names that you're throwing out there, like that Maniscalco name you just threw out there, I, that bloodline right there, I know personally. That's right. So for a Maniscalco to be doing anything, she's not going to ever do anything, half do it. That's right. And I guarantee you she got that bloodline, and she's going to be in competition on everything. Absolutely. So I, I'm glad to say, hear you say that. And you say she's a junior or She's a sophomore. She's a sophomore. Oh, sophomore. you got her for a minute now. That's yes, great sir. right there. Uh, Competition-wise, you guys actually go other places. Than, name some of the places that you go. Absolutely. So uh, we've run our first two races around here. Um, next week, or this coming weekend, actually, we go to our state cross-country course in Oakville, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll face the top teams in the state and surrounding states. We'll have states from our schools from Tennessee and Georgia come hang out and, you know, put on the competition. Uh, so we're in the... We're in the large school division, which will be the most competitive division on the guys and girls side. So we should see some major competition there. Um, we'll go to Scottsboro uh, in, I think, four weeks. Um, and that's where our sectionals is. So we'll get to see uh, some of the best best teams in the state also compete there. What do you think about the facility? You you guys got Chocolata Park, and, and you got to do a lot of running around out there. I mean, I mean that's top of the line. Absolutely. You can't beat it. Uh, that's the best cross-country course, it, definitely in the area, potentially in the state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's the best track facility, uh, I would say, in the state personally. You know, obviously, I may be a little biased, but I would say in the state. Uh, I mean, it's top of the line. You, you can't beat both of those facilities. That's right. So, listen, uh, we are actually trying this year uh, at TV24 to put the spotlight on you guys. And um, I just want you to know that, you know, we feel it's time to show some love towards the kids that's doing other things other than football and baseball. And, and cross country is, is one of them. And track and field is, is, is the big thing, especially when, <laughs> when the kids are getting ready to get out of school. They still want to be running it. And I, I understand a lot of kids stay in shape by coming to cross country. Absolutely. So I have, you know, in, in track season, that's a whole different animal. But, you know, I try to get any kid who's not playing a spring sport to come run track. You know, we got too much talent in these hallways to uh, right. to not do something in the spring. You know, come out and stay stay active, stay fit, learn a new skill. Right. Um, you know, I actually had, we had a great basketball player last year. He actually signed for, uh, for track and field. He's running the 800 meter down at uh, University of Mobile. So, you know, just because you're dedicated to one sport doesn't mean that you're completely sold out to that sport. Um, but cross country, you know, I try to get as many uh, non-football guys as I can, non-volleyball girls as I can, to, to come run because you know, football you can only play it up until you're a senior in in uh, college. You know, you can't really, you know, you may be able to go to NFL and stuff, but your time in Absolutely. any of these sports are very limited. Right. Uh, you know, you can run for the rest of your life. Yeah. You can be competitive running for the rest of your life. So I, I try to really tell these kids, like, hey, this is something that teaches you discipline. It teaches you, you know, how to manage your life, how to manage stress. You know, it, it teaches you a lot more than just how to put one foot in front of the other. Well, the kid that uh, you just mentioned that's in Mobile, is that kid last name right? It is, so Kyler that, right. You don't, you don't even think I did my homework before I came <laughs> up here, did you? I said, I, one thing about that kid, I, I, I watched him, and uh, I can remember when he was playing Little League Baseball at Oxford Lake, and his father, Randy, and his uh mom Christy absolutely was sitting over there and they just knew they had a major league baseball player uh, and I sit there and, I, and he was better the baby boy was better than the older son but and I was getting ready to get the story mixed up but it was the older son okay. that was playing second base and the ball got popped up in the infield and I sit there and watch that kid watch that ball and that ball went up and had it, it comes straight down in front of him, and he didn't move his glove or anything, and let that ball drop in front of him. And I knew then, I said, that baseball career right there is over, over. But they, but they are such a good family, and those Absolutely. kids, just like you said, when they start playing other sports, you know, and then he ended up going down to Mobile and running track. 
He's a good basketball player. Absolutely. Too. He's a great basketball player. Yeah. And that's, uh, uh, we were lucky enough to be able to, to have him for two years. Yeah. Um, and he came out thinking he was a long jumper. You know, the basketball guy can jump, right? Yeah. Um, and he was not a long jumper, but he was at a phenomenal 800 runner. He actually set our school record in the 800 at uh, a minute and 57 seconds. So that's two laps in a minute and 57 seconds. Yeah. So, I mean, he was he was moving. Um, but, you know, just being super aggressive, uh, coming from basketball, transferring that to track, um, that's really what got him a scholarship. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that young man. I'm proud of the job that you're doing with the kids. and. Uh, to me, I think more kids need to get spotlighted, put the spotlight on the kids so they actually will come out. And this is sure. a goal and this is a, a weapon that we want to use to help you guys start showing these kids and, and somebody say, hey, my son is running on, on TV, running track, and oh, his cousin might want to go try right. So this kind of thing that we want to try to do for you guys. but. Right today, is there anything that you would like to say to any kid that might, might want to try to come out and need to get in touch with you guys? Yeah, you don't have to be in shape. You don't have to be fit. Oh, uh, man. You, you just got to come. You just got to show up. Once you show up, then, you know, you come out and you just work. You know, that's, I always tell everybody it takes a very special type of person to be an outstanding football player or outstanding basketball player. It takes some natural raw ability. To be a to be a good runner, you just gotta work really hard. Mm. That's all it is. You just gotta work really hard. Uh, my wife set you up to say that. <laughs> I've been how about she been wanting me to go back and start walking and running, and I, well, I need to though. But I, I'm gonna skip that little part. <laughs> <laughs> but look, coach, you know, I, I know we're gonna be doing this here, like every two weeks, and we're gonna have um, the, the head coaches come in and do the coaches show. But I appreciate you sitting down with me. And next, in two weeks, we're going to be able to talk about some of the kids that are, that's winning the awards and uh, competition as what's going on. And you got the boys and the girls. Yes, sir. And I, I got a whole list of boys I can talk about if you want me to. But yeah. I know we may save that for next week. Yes, yes, so. yes. But, but that, we're going to do that. And I want you to talk about those boys because, in fact, these are your boys. Absolutely. And, and I. Once they get out here and we start putting them out here, they're going to be all our kids. So I, I want you to sharpen them and get them right. And uh, good luck. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate right. it. Thank you.